Welcome back to Trend Craze, and we are back with the top 10 best King Shark moments, so let's go. King Shark is a fictional character appearing in comic books published by DC Comics. The person, otherwise called Nanu, was made by author Carl Kessel and craftsman Tom Grumpman. Ruler Shark's first key appearance was in Superboy No. 0, October 1994, as an appearance prior to showing up in Superboy No. 9, November 1994. The person fills in as a photo Aquaman, Batman, and Flash. The person has been adjusted from the funnies into different types of media, including TV series, highlight movies, and computer games. King Shark made his true life to debut in the TV series The Flash, voiced by David Hatter. While Dan Payne depicted his human structure in the DC Extended Universe, King Shark was voiced by Sylvester Stallone in Movement Caught by Steve Agee in the film The Suicide Squad 2021. Brought into the world in Hawaii, Nanun is a humanoid shark. His dad is the king of all sharks, otherwise called the Shark God. Initially, there were a few questions and companies seeing his beginnings, as different characters like specialist Sam Akoa excused his starting points as Strange Notion and alluded to Nanu as a savage change and was additionally inferred that he was one of the wild men, developed creatures dependent on those in Kamandi, the last boy on Earth. However, the now-finished Aquaman Sword of Atlantis series shut down the contention by solidly building up him as the Shark God's child. King Shark was answerable for various missing people, for quite a long time, well before Superboy showed up in Hawaii. Samako was liable for acquiring him and bore the scars to demonstrate it. King Shark is liberated by the Silicon Dragons who plan on employing him. Nanun is an intrigue and kills his heroes prior to going to his mom's house. His mom permits him to chop her arm off to take care of him. Superboy figured out how to bring him down with his warm vision. At the point when Superboy and Makoa were doled out to the Suicide Squad to obliterate the Silicon Dragons, King Shark had to help. A dangerous belt was tied to his abdomen, set to explode on the off chance that anything happened to Makoa. Different individuals from the squad included Knockout and squad veterans Deadshot and Captain Boomerang. Nanue was a frenzied battling machine, destroying armies of the dragons and killing Sidearm as well when he sold out the group. Regardless of the belt exploding, King Shark endured the impact and the obliteration of the sanctuary. After an exploration group shipped off research to the refuges, remaining parts disappeared. King Shark was at first suspected, yet it ended up being Black Manta. King Shark battled Superboy, yet he was crushed and driven out to the ocean. King Shark isn't a highly respected DC villain in any case. Despite his nefarious ways, he's figured out how to perform no less than a couple of inspiring demonstrations. Things can get pretty strange in DC Comics, especially when King Shark and the Suicide Squad are included. This strolling, tail-looking humanoid shark appeared as a foe of Superboy's at the point in when he was living in Hawaii. King Shark, whose genuine name is Nanu, guaranteed to the child of the shark god, otherwise called the king, all things considered. However, special specialist Sam Makoa, a companion of Superboy's, never got tied up with that. Of course, King Shark is a ravenous eater, and people are among his number one tidbits. Regardless of that, the large person has still figured out how to cut out a couple of endearing minutes throughout the long term. However, they probably won't be inspiring in the conventional manner. Number 10. Eating his mother's arm to survive when discussing a Goliath human shark that has a preference for humans, attempting to discover healthy minutes turns out to be from his very own family member. However, he essentially had a sensibly decent connection with his mom. At a certain point, King Shark had gotten away from Sam Makoa and the experts on Hawaii. He wound up back under the watchful eye of his mom, however, he was not so good. Requiring food to endure, she let King Shark eat one of her arms. Number 9. Taking Out Sidearm there are a couple of individuals from the Suicide Squad who have sprung up in the group more than once. King Shark has been one such person as he's been an individual from the group a couple of times, however his origin was quite possibly the most paramount. The squad was shipped off with Superboy and Sam Akoa as they assaulted the Silicon Dragon submerged base. During the mission, Sidearm sold out the group so King Shark took care of the trickster. Try not to cross the shark. Number 8 turned into the caretaker of Arthur Curry. Changes to DC's congruence throughout the years have made exceptional modifications to practically every person's origin story. King Shark is positively one of those characters. However, the person is to some degree still a monster shark. One adaptation of his history really put King Shark in the situation of being the gatekeeper of a youthful Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman. Normally, there are an assortment of purposes behind this, yet this game plan actually had some charming minutes. Number 7. Capturing Grifter for Amanda Walker after some time, characters from other comic book universes have advanced into the DC Comics universe. Jim Lee's previous Wildstorm Productions is a perfect representation, as the organization was purchased by DC in 1999 and its person consolidated into DC Comics. Swindler was one of the most famous characters from Wildstorm and is kept on being in DC. At a certain point, he broke into Bell Rev and took something from Amanda Waller. The squad pursued him with an exceptionally forceful King Shark, securing him. Number 6. Threw up a yo-yo 
The Suicide Squad has had tons of colleagues throughout the long term, which is clearly an indication of treating said colleagues as expendable. One person who was a reluctant member was Yo-Yo, a scalawag with the capacity to develop or shrivel. At the point when the group was shipped off to stop an uproar of Bell Rev, Yo-Yo chose to get minuscule. Normally, King Shark ate him. Be that as it may, essentially he in the end regurgitated Yo-Yo back, which permitted the lowlife to lead the squad on a future mission. They're fundamentally best buds now. Number 5. Left Nemo for a Quiet Life Some supergroups have truly tangled names to legitimize their cool abbreviations. That surely is by all accounts the name with Nemo, which is otherwise called the nautical enforcement of macrocosmic order. There is nothing constrained regarding that by any means. For a long while, King Shark ultimately abandoned the gathering to attempt to track down a more tranquil presence. Now, he essentially abandoned being a supervillain and attempted to accomplish something else. However, he never appeared to be certain what that was. Number 4. Move to Atlantis Part of attempting to carry on with life the correct way implied moving to Atlantis. Prior to doing as such, King Shark normally went to Aquaman and requested to move into his new home. Aquaman concurred, accepting that his previous foe had changed his methodologies. While King Shark didn't go full supervillain once more, he cut out a life for himself as a wrongdoing master in the lower levels. However, essentially, he wasn't attempting to eat Superboy any longer. Number 3. Saved Mirror from Drowning During King Shark's time in Atlantis, Aquaman was removed as the realm's ruler. An egotist named Wrath replaced him, turning into the new head of Atlantis, a move that was not famous with a significant number of the city's inhabitants. One of those people was Mira. Sadly for her, she wound up losing her forces and began to suffocate. She was at last protected by King Shark and his group who clutched her as a negotiating concession. It was anything but a charming move, yet he did actually save her life. Number 2. Helped Aquaman Fight King Wrath At last, Aquaman chose to retaliate against Wrath. His most concerning issue was that he came up short on the military and required genuine reinforcement. All things considered, the previous King of Atlantis sent out toward the lower levels and King Shark. Getting King Shark to oblige the arrangement was an absolute disappointment. He didn't really accept that Aquaman would win the battle. Eventually, King Shark decided to battle close by one another, with Shark carrying the packs of Atlantis with him. Number 1. Loyal Suicide Squad Member Being accountable for something like the Suicide Squad accompanies a great deal of hardships. Luckily for Amanda Waller, she's quite possibly the most empathetic and driven individual in DC. In the event that anybody can get the remotest measure of reliability from the squad, it's her. That being said, a lot of that reliability comes from Waller embedding bombs in the neck of the colleagues. In any case, King Shark has really shown what is by all accounts real dedication to Waller in the Suicide Squad now and again. They may be the nearest thing he has to a family nowadays. Whatever falls were surely kind to use a surprise, but we'll make sure to be the first ones to deliver it to you. Stay tuned to know more. Until then, stay safe. Before you leave, make sure that you share, subscribe, and like the video.